why doesn't the Royal New Zealand Air Force have fighter jets? New Zealanders, our Kiwi cousins, have been in discussion with the US for a decade to purchase 28 second-hand F-16 fighting Falcons, but the proposed acquisition has never materialized. The question we have to raise is why New Zealand doesn't purchase fighter jets or create at least a self-defense capable air force if a cold war in the Indo-Pacific heats up and China creates a naval blockade in the Pacific. Thank you, and welcome to this channel. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe and click the bell icon to receive a notification when new content is released. According to the New Zealand government's plan, F-16s will support ground and maritime forces. The F-16S will have air policing, air-to-air, -air, air to ground and anti-shipping combat capability. The lease agreement with the US and support package will create an air combat force with an avionics and technical configuration of the same standard as the European F-16s. The Royal New Zealand Air Force currently operates a P-8A Poseidon MPA that conducts a range of tasks, including aerial surveillance of the exclusive economic zone, the South Pacific and the Southern Ocean, the Ross Dependency and Antarctica. The P-8A Poseidon can surveil maritime zones but doesn't carry strike packages like the F-16 Fighting Falcon. P-8A Poseidon and F-16 Fighting Falcon serve two different purposes. Budget Cuts in military terms, New Zealand has adopted a policy of enormous budget cuts over the past 20 years. New Zealand's military will receive about $3.3 billion under the country's 2023-2024 defense budget, which was unveiled on May 18, 2023, and that doesn't cover the inflation of 2022, which was just over 7%, according to Statistics New Zealand. New Zealand's army has the largest share of funding among the armed services, leaving the Royal New Zealand Air Force and Royal New Zealand Navy little to procure for the future. Why doesn't New Zealand take the military seriously? New Zealand has a long history of maintaining no defense strategy, creating a domestic environment of policy vacuum. Every time New Zealand has reduced its military budget, it has become a less effective and reliable military partner, and the slack, along with the risks and potential sacrifices, has inevitably had to be picked up by Australians and, ultimately, in turn, by the Americans and the British forces. So, while lovely New Zealand has become the internet's darling, acclaimed by the world for its peaceful and well-meaning demeanor, New Zealand taxpayers in recent decades have been able to duck both the expense of maintaining an effective fighting force and their incumbent responsibilities to their allies, they can only do so because Australian taxpayers and military personnel have been picking up the slack. Will Australia help New Zealand in an Indo-Pacific war? Australia and New Zealand are the most mutually trusted allies and part of the Five Eyes, an Anglosphere Intelligence Alliance for Signal Intelligence. New Zealanders certainly believe that Australia and the UK will come to their aid in case China creates a naval blockade in the Pacific. One thing is certain, New Zealanders don't count the costs of maritime blockades and the severe financial impact they will have on trade and the economy if China invades Taiwan. Under the current circumstances of the Royal Australian Navy and Hunter-class frigate saga, I firmly believe that in an Indo-Pacific war, Australia will prioritise its situation to overcome the naval blockade and continuation of maritime shipping from Australia. Thanks for watching. Thanks for visiting this YouTube channel. Visit GlobalDefenseCorp.com. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, and TikTok.